if you have been staying up to date with the reading, you'll see uh, a very important aspect missing from all of these transfer functions. Um, all of these transfer functions assume that we have a rational transfer function. In other words, a polynomial uh, divided by another polynomial. But we have one additional piece of commonly occurring uh, dynamic behavior that is not covered by any of these forms. And that is the idea of a transport delay. And so we covered the idea of transport delay, delay once before where we spoke of um, a, a tank system in one of our tutorials that was connected by um, a, and again, you know, the, the coded language for this is long pipe. And so when we say the words long pipe, what we're trying to explain is the idea that it will take time to move material from the one end of the pipe to the other end of the pipe. Uh, and we may have this kind of situation quite frequently in chemical systems uh, since the, the way that we build chemical engineering systems is largely by connecting the vessels together by pipes. And if we're working with a significantly sized site, those pipes will inevitably be long pipes. And so we in the chemical industry encounter literal transport delay quite frequently. It's one of the elements that specifically identifies or that is unique to the chemical processing industries where we work with movement of material quite frequently, uh, that we have this situation where if I have a, 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 a certain concentration of a substance entering into this pipe from tank one, and that material has to literally travel all the way through the pipe. We know that in our previous discussion of this problem, the uh, concentration that exits at a, per, at a particular moment in time at that point is actually CAT minus some delay or transport delay uh, term. And so we, we spoke about this a lot uh, when we discussed this uh, problem just to write down the time domain version of this. Um, and I just want to walk through that one more time. There's a couple of important things to understand about the way that transport delay works in pipes specifically. Uh, the first thing is that for incompressible fluids, the transport delay uh, is for intensive properties, but not for extensive properties. Now, what I mean by that is when we, uh, when material enters into that long pipe, if this is an incompressible material, the equivalent or the exact same amount of material will exit the pipe at that moment in time. Does everybody understand that? So in other words, if I have a flow and I'm just going to zoom in on this pipe. The flow in at any given time will be equal to the flow out at any given time if we have incompressible. So it's the flow is instantaneously changing. When I put something in here at that exact same moment, that, that exact same amount of stuff goes out there. The important thing to understand is it's not the same stuff. This is not a teleportation device. The balls that I put in on the left-hand side, if I, uh, and I, I like having kind of this uh, colored ball analogy, if I start putting in red balls on this side, I have to stuff those red balls. I have to keep stuffing those red balls in for quite a while until they start coming out on the other side. But if the pipe is already filled with balls, so let's say the, the pipe is at some moment in time filled with, uh, with black balls. Now, I've, I've, I've just moved, the, I've made a step change here, right? I've made a step change from taking black balls and putting it into the pipe and moved over to red balls going into the pipe. Every time I stuff a new ball in, a new ball comes out, but a different ball, right? It's the ball.
that comes out the other side. Okay, and so this is why we make this distinction that while the flow rates can be, even for constant flow rate, or even if flow rates are changing, if flow rates change on this side, they will change immediately on that side. But the intensive properties will travel because that particular packet of material has an identity and it moves along with the flow. So these extensive properties, in other words, the bulk flow rate uh, of, of the material, they travel immediately, right? Now, we model this using this delay term, and I've spoken briefly about this, but I want to kind of just uh, recap the conventions that we use. You will see that I've taken uh, this approach of writing the outgoing concentration in terms of the incoming concentration. And this is known as the causal form. And by now you know a little bit more about causality, so it should make a little bit more sense to you than it did when we first encountered this problem during a tutorial. But the idea is that we try to write our models in such a way so that all the terms are only referencing points at the current time or points in the past. When we find ourselves writing model terms that reference the future, that becomes an unimplementable model because we cannot reach into the future and change it. But we can look back and remember what happened. And so when we write our models, we will typically follow uh, this convention where we have a negative time delay term. Now, for all of you thinking, but wait a minute, that's mathematically equivalent to saying that uh, C A T plus D is equal to uh, the stuff that comes out the other side. We avoid that term not because the math doesn't work out, but because the causality doesn't work out. But because we prefer to think of the incoming concentration having an effect on the outgoing concentration rather than the other way around. The causality just doesn't work out the other way. Right. So, luckily, and, and, uh, for those of you who are interested in a bit wider reading, you may notice that um, in, in many cases, in, in many cases we avoid um, the Laplace domain when we do interesting analyses. So when you read out, you'll see that uh, in robotics, in mechanical engineering, in electronic engineering, and so on, to a certain extent, the Laplace transform methods that we teach in this course have fallen a little bit out of fashion. And again, like fashion, um, it's not because, you know, pantaloons aren't useful pieces of clothing anymore, but it is just weird when you use a different kind of fashion. Um, one of the reasons why those fields have moved towards a time domain based uh, approach is because much of the analysis that was done in the late 60s, which is now known as quote unquote modern process control, it's, it's weird how that works, like modernist uh, furniture is all from the 20s, uh, and modern control theory is all from the 60s when they were working on the space race. Those techniques, uh, including state space methods that we'll be discussing a little bit later, those techniques are very common for mechanical engineering systems, mostly because those systems, as a general rule, do not contain la uh, time delay. And so, one of the things that I feel the Laplace transform is particularly well suited to is modeling time systems that feature time delay. Why do I say this is so, uh, this is really useful? Because we have this really nice Laplace transform for time delayed functions. So if we have a system like this, where uh, we have, or if we have an equation like the one that arises from transport delay, we can Laplace transform that in this incredibly easy uh, little formula. Now this is in the table, you don't have to uh, write it down, although I do, I, I do recommend, I, well, <coughs> let's say I recommend that you memorize it and I feel that you will uh, already have committed this to memory by the time you've gone through one or two problems that feature time delays. Um, this is the only 
thing that you need to do in order to accommodate time delays in Laplace transforms. And what this means is that uh, whenever we have time delay terms, in general, we will be able to extend our general case anatomy of transfer functions here to include a certain time, domain, uh, time delay term. That time delay term, in most cases, will occur in the numerator of the transfer function uh, when it is what is known as a pure time delay term. In other words, if we have dynamics happening, and, and this is the kind of thing that, that very much arises from uh, the kind of system that I had here, you can imagine having... Um, you can have, imagine having a transfer function that maybe relates the incoming flow rates or temperatures to a reaction happening inside of this reactor. And you can then imagine that that being uh, transmitted but in delayed form to the second tank where we have a, another transfer function describing the relationship between those inputs and these outputs. And you can imagine that those things typically then end up just becoming lots of these time uh, or these Laplace transforms in series. So we'd have... A, uh, we would have a transfer function that corresponds to this first system over here that would not have time delay. We'd have another transfer function that corresponds to the time delay, and we'd have another transfer function that corresponds to this. And the way that we handle those systems in series, you should uh, be familiar with this idea by now, we'd have a, a G1 of S over here that is related to that dynamics. We'd have a E to the minus DS over there, which is related to the time delay itself. And we'd have another uh, G2 of S, which, which represents the dynamics of the tank. And so the overall uh, characteristic of that system would simply be the product of all of those terms together, and we would draw that in a block diagram like this. <coughs> and the way that this block diagram will fit together is that we could draw that as three separate blocks, or we could simply multiply out all of the different transfer functions, and we'll end up with one of these, one of these forms, uh, but with the delay term added. <coughs>